Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Melton. I'm CEO and co-founder of Corvius Medical. At Corvius Medical, we're creating a catheter solution to treat patients, heart failure patients in the outpatient setting in a quick procedure. Through one denervation technology, we can give these patients a solution to their congestive heart failure, where they currently have little to no effective options on the market. To date, we've tested our device to design freeze and are preparing for our first in human study later this year. I don't need to tell y'all that heart failure is, is massive and it essentially affects everyone in some capacity. Up to six million Americans are affected. Half of them do not respond to current therapy. And essentially this causes massive expenditures to the system, 35 billion a year. Many of those, are, a lot of that is coming from readmission costs. And terrifying enough, half these patients die within five years and some literature says 90% up to 10 in 10 years. Their hearts just cannot keep up with their, with their essentially pumping their, enough blood to their system. And, it's, and over time, that creates congestion, which essentially builds up pressure in the chest, causing a sensation of drowning. This increases their heart failure over time, but also continually brings them back to the hospital, readmitting them and, and worsening the progression of their disease. A nerve is essentially a, a driving this issue, that as the heart weakens, this nerve overactivates in a fight or flight response to help the patient. But over time, that creates congestion as it, as it accumulates in the, in the heart and into the lungs, and essentially creating this, uh, this feedback loop which is deteriorating our patient and lowering their quality of life. Current treatments on market do not, do not address the nerve interaction and the volume directly. As I said, medication, which is a $50 billion market, does, does it affects some patients in a, uh, in a positive benefit, but half of them are refractory over time. VADs, of course, are implantable and do, um, are more of a bridge to transplant, but of course, transplant and LVADs are invasive and not all patients are, can use them. And of course, with transplant, there's a supply and demand issue. Removing this, the nerve I was just discussing has been shown over across all these studies to show significant benefit with little to no adverse events reported. These studies were temporary nerve blocks, they were surgical lysis and catheter ablation. One study in particular I want to point out is this one where they surgically lysed this nerve in 10 class three heart failure patients. Over that one year, they observed them, and over time, all 10 patients went from class three to two to one with little to no adverse events recorded. So we created this solution to address this nerve and this issue. This, this nerve is located around T10 in, your, in the thoracic cavity, so it's not directly on the heart. Our device seen here can find the nerve prior to the procedure. We use a bipolar RF ablation to, to target that zone and we create a durable effect because we remove as much of the nerve as possible because nerves do regrow over time. Also with our way that we can essentially, with the needle platform, we can also affect other nerves long-term. This is essentially how it works. Our device goes in using a vein. We send a small stimulation pulse out to make sure we're in the right location to the right nerve. Once we see the response we're looking for, we have a small micropuncture needle that comes out and then re-stimulates again to make sure that we're again in the right location. We then use bipolar RF energy to ablate that nerve. And then we test one more time prior to leaving to make sure that nerve is deactivated. We then retract the needle and our device is pulled out and the patient procedure is over. Once done, it vasodilates the gut and it pulls the fluid from the chest back to the stomach where it once belonged. We created a device to make sure that we meet all requirements for physician adoption, for procedure confirmation, making sure they're confident leaving the OR, that they were successful, to collateral damage, making sure we have a controlled ablation zone. As many are here are aware, with other procedures, with ablation procedures, collateral damage is a known issue. We want to make sure we are alleviating that. But also, we're extra cardiac, meaning we do not affect the heart directly. We do not affect potentially other treatments and other options for cardiologists. Our patent strategy is, is essentially twofold. We want to make sure that we're protecting our device and the procedure itself. We currently have a PCT file which protects the procedure. We also have a, a, a non-provisional file which protects our device itself. We've also received word recently that we're uh, a notice of allowance for that second patent, and we expect that to be granted in the coming months. We're a class three device. We talked to the FDA about six months ago, and we're continually talking to them in a few months again. And essentially, where a classroom device will create barriers to entry and uh, transitional reimbursement during our trialing. We've also worked with a reimbursement expert to find transitory codes while we get ours long term. Our solution offers value across the board, of course, for patients helping their quality of life, giving cardiologists another way to treat these patients, but also importantly, reducing hospital costs as well as 
uh, quality penalties, which, as we are aware, with, are important to many of the large institutions. The heart failure market's massive. We're going to start with the moderate heart failure patients, that push the 5 million, class 2 and class 3. We'll pull that down to the 60,000 HEFPEF patients with repeatedly hospitalizations with no complications. Once we're successful, we'll grow to those with complications and other comorbidities, and eventually to all these patients who are non-responsive to current therapy. To date, we performed successful preclinical testing over the last few years where we verified the anatomy and cadavers. Over iterative testing, we provide five acute studies over 12 porcine models where we were able to test our factum-formed device on the target nerve. We also performed a chronic study to make sure that safety over time was seen. We used our device in three animals, and we performed three procedures in each, and essentially over time observed them. And at the end, there, were no, there was no hematomacine, and they were all healthy and survived. And this year, we are raising for our first in human study to ablate the splenic nerve using our transvascular approach. We were founded in 2020 during the TMC Biodesign Program, and essentially have been supported by institutions like Y Combinator, MedTech Innovator, UCS Roman, and right now we're at the Center for Device Innovation at the Texas Medical Center. I just mentioned our preclinical testing to date, and funding-wise, we have raised 900,000 in a pre-seed round, and I'm happy to announce we just received our phase one SBIR as well. Our seed rates will get us to our first in human data. Essentially, we are raising one and a half to do that. We're going to do about three to five patients and, and test on the acute efficacy setting and follow up for safety. We'll use that data to then raise our eventual Series A. We're a small team, but we're agile and we have skill sets across the board from our engineer coming from Johnson & Johnson, recommended to us from our main cardiovascular advisor, my, my, my physician and co-founder, Ishan Kamat, who has experience in cardiovascular uh, ablation, as well as at UCSF, a leading ablation hospital. And myself, I have a background in business and engineering and spent some time in pharmaceutical consulting. We're also supported by experts in the industry. Dr. Cohn has been pivotal since the beginning of our, of our inception to essentially help us get to where we are today and lead us forward. Dr. Levy Klein is an advanced heart failure specialist who has given us his expertise, as well as Dr. Jogi George has been pivotal in helping us prepare for our first human study later this year. Also, Glenn Rubita at the NXT Biomedical has been fantastic in our engineering approach, and then Tasha Bond, who is being seen here today as well, has led our quality charge. And lastly, Vivatoy has helped with our reimbursement strategy, and she also did the original Abiumet and Taver codes. And then lastly, Michael Cucciar has been fantastic helping us plan our preclinical our pre and our clinical study. To summarize, our device is ready for our first in human testing. After, all, after 15 animals, we are ready to bring this down and test it on our first patient. We've talked to the FDA and we understand our regulatory pathway and we've defined our market and our user base. We're raising one and a half million to start that first study and we'd love to chat later. Thank you.